If you want to know what the best beginner cars to drive are in Gran Turismo 7, you come to the right place because I have, well, I have a load of cars in GT7, uh, all the way from the original cars you get in the first cups to these ones, the LMP ones, the prototypes, even the WC hypercars, the super formula cars, but not all of them are good fun to drive and some cars have some little secrets that I'm going to let you know about in this video. So we're going to start off here with a new car that I recommend in GT7 and it's this, the Mazda 3. Now you might be looking at this and wondering why the hell is he recommending this car? Well, if you listen to it, you can engine swap a Mazda 787B absolutely screaming rotary engine into this thing. So you start off with a Mazda 3 that's, you know, kind of fun to drive. It's similar to a lot of road cars that we might have in real life when we're driving from day to day. But then this is absolutely classic Gran Turismo 7. Put a Mazda 787B, the beast of Le Mans, and suddenly you can tune this thing and really learn about tuning because yes, putting a massive engine in it that will go really fast down the straights is great, you know, at going down the straights, but it's not going to be so good going around the corners. You need to learn how to drop the suspension, make everything a bit stiffer, maybe make a uh, reduce some weight in the car as well, work out what tires you're going to be on, um, look at your gearing as well because suddenly your gearbox is going to be going a little bit mental having this in the car. So it's a really good example of Gran Turismo 7 in a nutshell I find with this thing. You start off with a stock Mazda 3 car that you can get off the street in a dealership and immediately, well not immediately, you need to unlock a few things and I've got some videos for that which I'll link at the end. But once you've done them you can put a Mazda 787B engine, absolutely classic Gran Turismo 7. That's why I've included it in this list because I don't think this car gets a lot of love to be honest. I think it deserves a little bit more love and you can see here that I went around Catalonia with the Mazda engine in it and to be honest I had a lot of fun. I'm racing against actual homogulated group 4 racing beasts. These are you know GT cars, GT4 cars to be precise and the Mazda does actually put up a pretty good fight. More of a sight than I was expecting so let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the Mazda. The 787B engine isn't super, super cheap, but you can get the credits he says quite easily. Got a lot of credit cards on my channel. And I recommend picking up the Mazda 3. Only 37,000 credits for the car itself. Now moving on to a really underrated car. Is it a car or a van? You let me know. But this thing is so good to drive. And for a beginner, I think it really teaches you the fundamentals of driving in Gran Turismo 7. Because you have to drive this, the Toyota Alphard so 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 smooth but when you do it is an absolute beast you can see here we're running in bop in a daily race and before the footage was me running absolutely tuned dropped it to the floor where it goes around you know way faster than the gt3 racing car at monza but here in, in, in a sort of like bop stock settings you can see just how smooth i need to be in the inputs if you have a look at the way i get on the brake very gently getting off the brake very gently, getting on the power very gently as well. So it really rewards smooth driving and this thing handles really well. Very unusual, you wouldn't expect something so tall basically to handle nicely, but this handles better than so many race cars I've driven in Gran Turismo 7. I'm thinking of some of the really exotic um, supercars in the game like the Aston Martin 177, the Lamborghini Countach out of the box was absolutely terrible. This thing out of the box, and it does look like a box, handles really nicely. So if you're new to Gran Turismo 7 or you're wondering what cars to buy that are fun, this really won't break the bank. It's very cheap. Again, it was an added car in GT7, one that they added for free. And I really, really, really enjoy it. It's Toyota Rafford to Alphard. If this comes back in a daily race, I'm going to be absolutely on it because I love this thing. And it is much bigger than the next car on my list. The next car on my list is a tiny car. And this is the Suzuki Cappuccino. Again, you can engine swap this thing. You can put a huge engine in the Suzuki Cappuccino and it turns it into an absolutely ridiculous thing. You can see here I'm racing with... These are Group 3 racing cars. That was a Skyline Nissan, Skyline, Nissan Skyline Super Silhouette car that we just breezed past. So again, you can start with this thing absolutely stock and have some great banger racing but it is capable of taking a beastly engine with the engine swap and you can see driving here in the Nürburgring I have so much fun driving this car the Suzuki Cappuccino it's an absolute joy to race. see if I go around the corners here it just wants to lift that inside wheel like a go-kart so we're at the Nordschleife the Nürburgring and you'll see in these clips just the way that the chassis is sort of flexing and lifting and actually allowing us to get a lot of rotation here in what 
Looks like it's going to be damn conditions going side by side with a massive Nissan, uh, not Skyline, Nissan GTR and uh, a Ferrari ahead of us. So I massively recommend picking up the Cappuccino. Very cheap, but you do need it to come in the rotation in the used car dealership. This is the first car in this video where you just cannot go out to Brand Central and buy it at any time of the year. This thing comes in and out of rotation. If you want to know when it's in rotation, join our Discord. Uh, Discord.gg forward slash clear. We've got people in the Discord there that will let you know when this car is back. The Super Cappuccino. I absolutely love this thing. Now, this is an engine swap variant. So we're going down the straight. You can see it's 133 miles now, 134. So not quite as fast as the GT cars that we are racing here. Not quite as fast, but still pretty damn good. And you can see they're in third place here. Now, the next car on the list that I really recommend you picking up as a beginner if you want to go anywhere near online racing is the Toyota Supra. This car often dominates the leaderboards, as you can see in this video. And once you can drive this car, you can basically compete in any Group 3 daily race, and Group 3 is the most common uh, category for daily racing. And also, I think, in the online GT World Series as well, uh, Group 3 is sort of like the staple. So the Toyota Supra here is an interesting car to drive, can be quite talky, can be quite snappy when you get on the power. You can see here we're at Kyoto, which is a very, very, very technical circuit. So if you go to somewhere like Kyoto in this Group 3 car, now this will cost the most credits out of any of the cars um, we've had before in this video, albeit, you know, without an engine in. And you can see these curbs here, you really need to hook them in the Supra and you can feel the amazing balance that there is in this car. Center of gravity allows you to really pivot it around the middle of the car. So you can get a little bit of oversteer when you want, then you can get off the throttle and it will start to understeer nicely in a controllable way. It's a really fun car to drive and very, very, very competitive in daily races. You can see here this Japanese driver took this car around the Nordsch life and was leading the daily race time trial here in his GR Supra, um, which is just a phenomenal car in Gran Turismo 7. It has been now for pretty much a year, hasn't it? So I really doubt they're going to nerf this car. By the way, let me know in the comments if this video has helped you. Make sure to subscribe as well. I really appreciate it. It's great going through the cars in my garage and letting you know what's good where. So if you have any thoughts on any other cars, let us know in the comments. But the Toyota Supra in Group 3, really, you can't go wrong. And if you're looking to drive for a manufacturer in the GT World Series, I can pretty much always recommend Toyota. Toyota, Nissan may be very, very strong. Porsche as well can be, but depends what the Cayman's doing. Look, I've really enjoyed going through my garage here, letting you know the beginning cars. Do you want to see intermediate cars? that are a little bit trickier to handle? If so, let me know in the comments. Really hope you enjoyed this video, going through best beginner cars for GT7, and I'll see you. See you next time.